right. Good morning and welcome. Thanks for everybody uh, coming this morning and thank you to our viewing audience for attending our annual Eggs and Issues Breakfast. Uh, we are coming to you from the beautiful Oak Marsh Golf Course. We want to thank them for hosting uh, and thank the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce who is our sponsor and puts this event on every year. So uh, my name is Mark Cove. I'm the founder and market president of Platinum Bank chartered here in the beautiful city of Oakdale. Uh, I'm a proud 22 year uh, resident of the city of Oakdale uh, and also a proud uh, double decade plus member of the Oakdale Chamber of Commerce. So I'm, I'm uh, very glad to be here as always and uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, our format today is a little different than it's been in a few years. For those that have watched and, and, and taken part, we've had uh, the very blessings of having uh, large panels and a lot of cooperation from anybody we've ever asked to take part in this event. Uh, and we had some feedback last year saying, let's drill it down a little bit. Let's make it a little bit more intimate and smaller. So you notice the uh, long skirted table with microphones are gone. We're going to here have a coffee talk this morning. And for those that are in attendance, it's a coffee talk with some eggs. Uh, if you go back years and years ago, we had this breakfast without eggs, even though we still called it an eggs and issues breakfast. So, uh, But we're glad to be here again, and uh, I want to thank our two guests, and let's now move on to that. We have uh, our mayor of Oakdale, uh, Mr. Paul Renke here, and we have our county commissioner, Stan Karwaski. And these two are not at all um, behind the scenes and uh, not at all uh, new to us. They've been around a long time, both of them. They both have served as Oakdale City Council men prior to these posts and uh, got a lot of background between commissions and between their elected service. So I would like to take time to make some introductions, but we do want to move things a little differently than we've done in the past. So I'm going to take us back to December 20th, 1965 and pretend I'm Mr. Chuck Barris and we are in the dating game. And so, as we do today's introductions, I want to imagine that both of you are on that show and give your introductions in that vein. Tell us a little bit about yourselves, your family, your likes, your dislikes, your pastimes, etc. Not your standard political introduction. Uh, so with this, I'm going to start with our mayor to my, to my left, to our viewing right, uh, Mr. Paul Ranke, then I'm going to follow up by our county commissioner. Mr. Stan Kowalski. So, Mayor? So, 1965, dating <laughs> game. So, I'm after, okay, this, this is weird. First off, well, thank you, Mr. Cole, for yes. inviting thank us you. to speak this glad, morning. Glad to be and, here. And uh, also, thank you for the uh, Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce to, um, to put this on. Dating game. <laughs> 33 years ago, I saw this beautiful one. And in fact, she took my parking spot down in the city of Rochester while we were going to some, um, some chamber function. I'd never seen her before, but she had this awesome hot car, and she was an <laughs> awesome looking blonde gal. And uh, boy, she took my spot and I got irritated, so I had to go park two blocks down. Fast forward a little bit, about, uh, about an hour later, the um, uh, event host uh, introduces us. And she turns out she was a um, sales rep for a large office products company down in Rochester, and I was a um, uh, sales guy for a large uh, general contractor in Rochester. One thing led to another, and 33 years later, uh, we're still married very happily. Uh, one son, Adam, 26, I believe, and um, living on the north side of Oakdale. The Maybe that's good enough for now. Yeah, any, we, we can do more. Yeah, we can do. How about favorite pastime before I... Move you know, favorite pastime, right now I'm experiencing uh, what some of you know as cabin withdrawal. Cabin withdrawal. So favorite pastimes are outdoors. Fishing, boating, swimming, um, sitting by the fire, having the cigar, uh, maybe a, a cocktail or two, and uh, listening to the um, loons, uh, listening to the kids down on the point playing and having a, uh, just a heck of a time. And so... Uh, we chose to sell that a couple of years ago, and um, uh, so now that you mention it, uh, you know my favorite pastimes have had to been shifted, and we're still looking for some place to rejuvenate, and some place to go and get that second wind for uh, for our lives. But um, you know all that outdoor sports, and uh, and also uh, just kicking back and, and traveling. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. Dating game? How do you get a bachelorette? 
<laughs> Commissioner Karwaski wow. to, to be interested in your life. Now, I know your wife is, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Mark, for hosting. Uh, thank the audience here. Uh, thank the residents of Oakdale and um, the whole cable area that this will be filming on. I, Matamita and further north, primarily. Um, thank the uh, Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce. So let the dating begin. Um, well, I think, I don't know if that show you had the other with three candidates that you were picking, but uh, when I met my <laughs> wife, uh, we both attended the same high school, grew up on the east side of St. Paul. I think that was a natural migration to move to Oakdale or move to the east metro. And in Oakdale, was the spot to be. In fact, my wife picked out the house. She said, uh, well, I can't get too far ahead of me. Uh, I, I was very quiet. I really didn't talk to women, girls much. In fact, I used the slogan that I knew three, I talked to three women up through high school. One was my mom, one was my sister, and I'm not sure who the third was. <laughs> but I did actually, through my church group, um, as a, we call it, had a junior high, not middle school, I, there was a collection of girls that were very tight, and uh, I did actually get to know them and, um, up and through high school, and I never met Linda, my wife, of 38 years. But she was one of their friends. And then after just, you know, uh, the group got larger after high school and she became one of those friends. And it's, you know, they say it's better to be friends first a lot of times. And so we've been friends over 40 years and she's still my best friend. So we got married uh, at the ripe old age of 21. And I was 22 the next day and we've been married 38 years. and. Been great. Uh, we make a good team. Um, we've got four children, uh, soon to be three son in laws, uh, soon to be three grandchildren. We have two now. Um, had a career at uh, Graco for 38 years. Uh, and when I was retiring, I got recruited to uh, get in this role of county commissioner. Unfortunately, Ted Berth had passed away. I was mayor at the time, and we knew someone like Paul could step up and do a great job as mayor, and that really does help me. I was fortunate enough to move on and be county commissioner, and it's a kind of a close to a full-time <coughs> thing if you're doing it right, and um, that's where I'm at in a, in a short, short suite. Uh, as far as I like uh, getting out about, uh, socializing, uh, I really like sports and recreation. Probably golf is number one. Um, I went through cabin withdrawal many years ago. Now I'm getting pressure on from my family and grandkids to buy a cabin, so we'll see where that goes. But just general recreation and, and being out about and uh, enjoying life. Awesome. Thank you. Commissioner, thank you. And uh, I hope that our audience that may have known these two for years found something new in that introduction. Uh, uh, let's move on to your positions. What I'd like to do, and I'm going to start with uh, Commissioner Kowalski for this question. Uh, I get asked many times over uh, what a county commissioner does. Uh, and sometimes people ask the same question about being mayor. So in those veins <coughs> there, what, what, what entails the day, the week, the month of being county commissioner? Uh, good question. Um, it is really, they call it that invisible layer of government. Um, so my district too, there's 200 and uh, around 250,000 residents, 252,000 residents. So I represent a little over 50,000 people. We have five county commissioners. So I represent eight different cities. Oakdale being the largest city of 55% of who I represent. And that's just to be a point person uh, or an expert because the five county commissioners really work together to spend those dollars as wisely as possible. Kind of like a city council. I'd call it very much like a city council. So 
what I do is oversee the needs of the district and the better good of the entire county. A lot of uh, that starts with things like the county parks, the big regional parks, which are complementary to the city parks, the larger roads, not as big as highways, but they're state aided. County highways, the county roads, which are good feeder roads that go through Oakdale and other cities that complement the city streets. Uh, the library system, uh, a little bit of the courts, but more the corrections. And then half our budget, and the biggest part of learning is the social <coughs> service program. So we're that safety net for seniors, for children of abused families, and uh, numerous programs to uh, make sure the health and welfare of the residents are taken care of. And I think we're that body that kind of coordinates uh, between all the cities that things are, there's a some synergy in the, in, the, in the county. And really a lot of the state aid primarily goes directly to the counties. So you have that local control of <coughs> programming as efficient. So if you had all the social service programs uh, handled by each city, there'd be so many redundant employees, so maybe the county level is the right level to have that performed. If the state was doing it, and the state was doing those county roads from a distance, they would not have that care as, as being at the local level. In addition, I serve on, and that's just the local things we do, I serve on uh, a rounded out 18 other boards or commissions. A lot of those are working with other counties to collaborate, <coughs> and I'll leave it at that. So those 18 other boards or commission uh, keep you pretty How busy. often does the county commission meet? We meet every Tuesday. Um, uh, it's usually pretty much an all day. Uh, board meeting takes the better part of the morning and then there's workshops in the afternoon. Quite often you might go from there and uh, like Oakdale, we've been working a lot together on the bus ride, the transit, and the Hadley 36 interchange. So if the county is there to present, I'm there to support or be called on for questions. Awesome. And the public can attend those meetings, and that's in Stillwater yep. at the Government yep. Center? Yep. Conference? Everything's an open meeting law. And okay. uh, there, uh, you don't really get too many people to attend, which is good. They, they're confident in what's being done. Awesome. Commissioner, thank you. Same question to you, except for now, what is it like to be mayor and what's the day in the life or a week in the life of being mayor? Thanks, Mark. You know, maybe to step back uh, and, and just talk a little bit about Oakdale, which is um, an amazing city. So Oakdale um, uh, incorporated in 1858 or thereabouts, real close. We also have about 11 and a half square miles of property and land in our, in our city um, uh, territory. We also have 194 miles of roads. We have um, 13 parks and maybe uh, 100 FTEs or 100 people working and serving the, um, the residents. So I look at um, our city as uh, in the city council especially and in our city council there, is, uh, there are no districts, there are no wards, everybody is at large. And uh, I look at the council as, uh, say, the board of directors uh, incorporating a business or in incorporated in a business. And in our case, because we have had such great leadership in, from the council and from the mayor, past mayors, um, we get to operate as a board of directors. I get to operate as the chairman of the board. But the department heads across each of the uh, uh, di uh, divisions uh, of, the, of, the of the community of the city than actually do the work. Uh, it's complicated. It's very complicated. When you think about 28,000 people each having own interests and wants and demands, and yet uh, our, our city staff takes care of and serves and encourages all those residents. Uh, recreation, finance, administration, uh, streets, forestry, uh, you know, the most obvious, most public ones are the police and the fire. But there are, uh, I think there are 13 different uh, departments in our city that, uh, that run the city. So then as council and as mayor, we get to set the stage, we get to encourage, we get to be the public image of Oakdale. And then I get to uh, um, 
solicit and seek advice from the counselors to, uh, to determine, help determine what's important and how to set that agenda for the next um, period of time. So it's a, it's a thoroughly enjoyable role. Um, it might involve 10 hours a week on an average. It might involve three, out, three nights uh, a week um, out doing something on average. And it, um, it's an enjoyable and it's important. And uh, I've been very fortunate. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Now, uh, moving on to maybe more <coughs> traditional uh, questioning, and I'm going to call this, this is our time we're going to move into the boardroom, and uh, we're going to do a SWOT analysis, and we're going to take that piece by piece. For those that know SWOT from the corporate world, it's, uh, it's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and I'd like us to start on strengths, uh, and that is, uh, you know, what are some of the strengths in Washington County and the city of Oakdale? <coughs> What are some things we may know, some strong points about the county and or city uh, that we don't know? So uh, maybe start with some of the obvious ones, but for everybody they're not, and then maybe move into uh, some things. And however you want to answer this question, uh, that is fine. Uh, we're going to, again, keep alternating. So we're going to start here in strengths with Mayor Renke. Thanks, Mark. And strengths is easy for Oakdale. Think about um, where our leadership has been. In our case, we have um, experienced department heads, uh, some people uh, approaching 32 years of service to the, to the community. We have um, seven, I think, people that have had um, you know, more than seven, eight, nine years of service in their role or in their departments with the, uh, with the city. And so one of the significant strengths that we get to experience and our residents get to experience is that depth of knowledge is so deep and so wide that as issues come up, um, they get handled. Perfect case. Um, uh, we had uh, the, the water main break uh, on 694, the, the water main going underneath 694. The, it broke. Now, we've done our own preparation internally from a council and from departments about emergencies. You know, what's, what are you going to do when something happens? Uh, Bart uh, Fisher, our city administrator, has been very helpful to me to not get so detailed about trying to create a plan for every, every issue, but create the process, the plan that outlines the process about how to get things done. So we did not have a plan you know, for fixing that underground uh, water main under, under, underneath 694. And yet, um, in fact, our uh, public works director wasn't even in the state at the time when that uh, thing broke. He was on a pre-planned uh, outing. Uh, but Sean, um, Sean Nelson, the, the supervisor, stepped up, took care of the processes to get the people involved properly, quickly, and coordinate that whole event so that it was a major inconvenience to um, uh, 88,000 cars you know, every day that could not uh, travel on that section of road. But within, within seven days, the road was, went from good to the break to the repaired, fully operational again, uh, and I'll say it's due to the um, depth of knowledge and the process knowledge of how to get things done, and even the relationships. When you, when you combine the deep knowledge and history and the long-term relationships that our people have with our colleagues in the neighboring communities and with the state, um, things like that, when that allows us to take care of things that are difficult um, very quickly and very easily. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Same question. Strengths. We're in the boardroom. County Commissioner. Uh, strengths of Washington County. Thank you, Mark. I think the strengths of the county are, uh, it's just like in the city, it's really the people, uh, the community involvement, um, just the quality of uh, people that care, work together. You see that in every city. Um, no better done here than in Oakdale, but as I get to know my eight cities I represent and you work so much with the other cities, it's amazing the community involvement. So it really starts with the people. Um, our quality of life, there was a survey I took in, um, like a couple years ago as I got on the board that said that uh, the number one thing they liked was the quality of life. So my job is really to 
maintain that or enhance it? Because I really feel you have to be working to get better, otherwise you're going to slip. Um, part of that is just the beauty of our land. Um, we're still 55% rural, and there's probably long range, it's still going to stay, much of it's still rural and farming. So you'll have that balance of natural areas, but yet economic growth and some population growth. But we're 43 miles long and uh, about 10 miles wide. There's 43 lakes. And we have that wonderful park system, wonderful libraries, and wonderful neighborhoods. And the county just, again, plays that safety net, provides that road system and those kind of amenities working with the cities. Um, I think uh, one of our strengths, too, I think, is I'd like to see a lot more of our economic development. We have a talented workforce. One of the uh, things I serve on is workforce development board. So now we're not, I think we really need to grow a workforce. We have 131,000 out of our 250,000 uh, residents, 131,000 workers, and over 100,000, about 102,000 leave our county we're losing talent to other counties. So I'd like to get business growth, and uh, we're right now we got about 13% of our taxes off of uh, uh, commercial businesses. The rest of the taxes is on the burden of the residents. And right now the residential tax is, is really low, and we get a lot for the money, but moving forward other counties have 20 to 40% of their tax base off of commercial property. So, if we can develop, I think our strength is that we have the potential with our workforce here, we'll develop a stronger workforce to grow businesses, maybe shift a little bit from retail to quality jobs, and that growth then will get off taxpayers growing businesses to keep the property taxes low on the, uh, on the residential properties and grow that business community, a lot of potential. Uh, weaknesses, uh, not too many, but everybody's got weaknesses. I think ours is the water quality. Um, we've got a, a water plan, uh, and the county takes that protecting our water resources really importantly. But now we do have some of these uh, problems with 3M and pollution, and we got the settlement uh, with 3M. $850 million, that's part of the solution to, to make sure moving forward everyone in the county has clean and safe water, so that's our weakness, yeah. but we're going to make strides to improve that, and everybody drinking water, I think, is really, the cities have done a great job to move people to safe water, but we got to look ahead and have safe water for many years to come, because we have some tremendous quality <clears throat> and safe water out there. It's just that we have deposits of risk and we need to take care of that. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. Led right into weaknesses. I was gonna start with Commissioner Kowalski, so that was a perfect segue <coughs> now. For you, Mayor Renke, what may be one, of, one or two, or I know uh, you might say there's none, but what is maybe one is one of the bigger weaknesses or a couple things that you would note um, for the city of Oakville? Weaknesses, um, no, none. Challenges? <laughs> a few. I'll, I'll echo um, Commissioner Kowalski's comment about the water and the, um, uh, the PFOAs and the, PF, the chemicals called PFOA and PFOSs that have been determined or been found in our uh, aquifers. Now, we have been, um, Oakdale, I think, has been very smart. And um, I'll credit it back to um, um, Mayor uh, Serac and also City Administrator Craig Waldron on the choice that they made with council support to, uh, and, and you were a counselor yeah. at the time, um, to not uh, attack 3M, you know, a very important, influential uh, corporate partner and a very good corporate partner in our region. And rather than attacking 3M, uh, the decision was made to let's work together and take a, a, a very uh, young technology of filtration see if that can be expanded to use for public uh, municipal well systems. And it turned out that it could. And so the result of it was really a, a state-of-the-art filtration system uh, 
that was created and paid for by 3M on city property over by the public works building. But what ended up happening is that all of our water, our potable water, drinking water, was run through that um, filtration system, removing 99.9% .9 of the pollutants from our drinking water. So for the last 12 years, uh, the residents of Oakdale have um, enjoyed uh, uh, great water. And you know, I've joked in the past that we should be bottling our water and selling it because it's probably cleaner <laughs> than what we're buying uh, on the store. So that's one threat or challenge, uh, weakness. And the other one, I think, is a challenge of uh, transportation. Uh, Washington County is broad, large, and uh, Oakdale is long and skinny. And our, our public transportation, people call it mass transportation, um, uh, it suffers. So we are car dependent, and um, I've enjoyed that personally. And many of my colleagues in the same uh, age bracket or in the same career stage have grown up with the cars. That is changing. Uh, my son um, uh, is looking forward to uh, several uh, uh, vehicles or the uh, options that are coming in the Metro East and the bus rapid transit I hope we'll talk about a little bit later. Yes. But between that and what he used to ride in the um, uh, downtown, the light rail from Augsburg out to various places in, in Minneapolis, he really enjoyed. So our ability as a city and as a region to look at what's changing to address something that's going to be happening 20 years in the future um, is happening. Mm -hmm. And so the, the threat of improving or the weakness of not having gr very good transportation, public transportation, um, is being addressed and I think it's being addressed very, very well. Thank you, Mayor. And now back on to you, Commissioner, with opportunities. And I, I'm going to take off something you said in your last piece about the 55% of the rural land still here and about the tax base that, you know, 13% of the taxes in this, I think, is what the number you threw out uh, are from residents. And then maybe that leads us into 13% of commercial. Well, 13% of commercial that there could be an increase. So yeah. is there an opportunity? And I'll let you add to others, but is there is one of the opportunities then in Washington County to grow the industrial commercial base? And if so, how's that done? Yeah. And uh, what are some other opportunities you see yeah. uh, for the county? Um, First of all, uh, for growth of business and growing our tax base, I just want to touch on transit. Is uh, right now uh, the number one need in that same survey that recognized quality of life, the number one need they recognized was needing transit, better transportation. So here we're not only working hard to get a new 494, 694, 94 uh, inter interchange here, working hard through the state and federal legislation on our needs, and, but we also need that transit piece. And companies, all the top companies throughout the country will not come to a county unless you have transit. It has to be in your plan. So um, anyhow, uh, your question was uh, growing uh, business, how do we Growing the business and getting that, yeah. that base of 13% right. business taxes to maybe where it's a little bit even right. better. Percentage. The transit, the, the development along the transit way of well, there's hundreds of acres. Uh, right, right now we see those values of those properties starting to go up around there. And I'm not talking, we're talking, we want to keep business taxes down. And by growing the business pie, that will help keep business taxes down. So we want business taxes low, but that get that growth in that area so that we can keep residential properties. Um, cities like Oakdale have wonderful, with the leadership of Mayor Ranke and the City Council, they, they can develop on their own. You know, we'll support with the infrastructure of good roads and working together, uh, Woodbury and Montanita as such. Uh, right now we're revitalizing, example, I represent Willerney and Montanita, and we've got uh, Stillwater or County 12 through that city, it's going to be revitalized and I worked through both councils. Willerney, small council, no infrastructure, hardly could, they never levy for money. Matamidae, much better off, bigger apparatus could easily absorb their portion of the cost, even though the 
Coney put most of that money into that road because it's Coney Road. Uh, that's going to help that community a lot by revitalization. So we're kind of in, uh, we're going to provide the infrastructure, but also there's, uh, I think like well over 40 towns and townships, smaller towns, where the county provides, helps them with land use. Uh, we're on the west side of the town, we, we don't need to be involved. We just are a supporting partner. <clears throat> but other areas in the, the community, we can uh, help those cities develop. We uh, hired, uh, now going on our third year, an economic development person to market our county, Chris Eng in economic development, to help those smaller cities. Uh, one, they'll direct opportunities to Oakdale, um, market the county, and also work with other cities to make sure they can land that nice business that'll be a good fit for their community. So, I'll leave it at Thank that. Thank you, Commissioner. So, on to Mayor Ranke. Opportunities that may be in front of the city of Oakdale. So the opportunities around uh, increasing commercial tax base and increasing commercial growth in, in our city or uh, Metro, uh, Metro East um, are significant. There's many, many opportunities. Count, uh, Commissioner Karwalski, you talked about the number of acres that are available. Absolutely. When I think about what's available in Oakdale, I can uh, point to two significant projects right now that are uh, well underway for the planning processes to enhance our housing base and some of our commercial base. The first one is just to the south of us, which is just uh, off of 94 and 4th Street in Helmel, which is the um, area, it's roughly uh, 20, uh, 40, 40 acres of, uh, of space, privately owned, that is being rezoned, reguided to reflect what they call a transit-oriented development. So that's a slightly higher density, in fact, significantly higher density housing that is going to be able to take advantage of the bus rapid transit line. And the bus rapid transit line, again, is that um, specialized transportation that um, uh, I jokingly call it's light rail light. So it's a bus, but because it's on its own dedicated guideway, you know, we're not moving into the traffic, we're not moving into 94, we're not moving uh, through other congested streets. It's in its own dedicated lanes. So the, we're fortunate that we're going to have two stations that that um, bus uh, is going to be able to stop at. First one is at Helmo and Fourth. Second one is uh, along Hudson Road. And um, at the at the time, we're going to change the the zoning to allow developers to come in and create um, housing. Uh, on that development, there'll be roughly 1,100 uh, homes, uh, townhomes, apartments, and roughly 40,000 square feet of commercial space um, uh, when it's all completed. On the north side, uh, just north of the old uh, Emation headquarters, which is now the Slumberland headquarters, uh, there'll be a, a beautiful, beautiful development for neighborhood development along with industrial and commercial. At that development, they'll, when built out, will be roughly 1,400 homes, uh, 300, 350 single-family homes and the rest different uh, styles of townhomes and apartments. Now, um, I always chuckle and I smile. Sometimes I can't talk uh, when I'm in public, but when I hear a city official or a state official talk about the jobs that they created because of some business that came to town, in essence, that's crazy. Cities, counties don't create jobs. State you know, does a little bit differently, but from our local level, we don't create jobs. What I think we do when we excel at is having partnerships, relationships with all the players in the region that allow a, a private investor or a private company to come in and risk their money trying to create a building, create a service, create a product that is going to benefit um, the population, but is also going to allow them, hopefully, to generate a profit. Hopefully, that creates a bigger business, that expands their facility, offers employment to our city or our residents and to the county residents, and that momentum becomes a positive momentum that keeps on building. That's fantastic. Our job, I think, as city officials and, and municipal leaders is to create the environment that allows a business owner to come in and have her 
feel comfortable investing millions of dollars, hard-earned dollars, in an, in an environment, in a community, in order to um, take care of a problem and generate a profit. So when, we're, when we shine with um, new buildings or new properties or new developments, new businesses that come into our community, it is truly because of uh, a cooperative effort that has trained uh, or training and education for our citizens, that has uh, uh, financial resources available for the businesses to take advantage of, that has uh, clear guidelines from, uh, from the city, design guidelines, zoning guidelines, all the planning guidelines that require certain elements to safeguard the, um, the, the natural resources, and then um, encourage them and support them as they construct or as they develop. Um, so that, that's exciting as can be, and, uh, and we're very fortunate that this next 10 years in Oakdale is going to see tremendous growth and roughly, you know, easily 1.25, maybe one and a half billion dollars of investment, private investment, that's going to take place at uh, the Helmo Station south, at the 3M Foundation Station just north of the new uh, Slumberland campus, uh, north, and then even at the um, uh, north further with the new bridge going over 36, the new Hadley Bridge going over 36, um, those three sites are going to generate a significant investment significant private investment in the community and it's exciting outstanding and i'm going to stay with you mayor Renke, for the last one since we're bouncing back so threats what do you think uh, is uh, some of the pressing things that may be threatening and it might be today it might be five years from now but what's, what's one of the larger or a few larger threats that the city of oakdale faces so then we'll turn it to mayor Co or to councilman uh, Commissioner. Commissioner. <laughs> See, I've just known him. He's done all three of them. He's done all three. I, I got to keep that straight all these years. Uh, so then we'll go on to uh, Commissioner Kowalski after that. Uh, the threats. I'm going to talk about two. One is a very personal one that um, I don't know how broadly it's shared, but, it, but I'm a firm believer that we are, as a society, we are um, entering a phase where our younger people may not be able to interact on a personal level well. Uh, I say that because of uh, several studies I've recently read and reports that I've watched um, in my professional world. And the, the issue generally, I think, is um, you know, our younger people are so adept at using technology and being in front of the screen and getting things done using that medium. Well, um, just because somebody has 400 Facebook friends and can text and chat and take care of their social needs online doesn't mean that they can do a real good job sometimes interacting face to face. So that means two things are going on. First, how are they going to interact with their uh, workmates on successful teams, but also with dealing with struggles and difficult conversations when it's not going well and we have to make a change. So that's one concern. The other concern is uh, my frontline people or the frontline people interacting with our customers. Um, that's a whole batch of uh, brackets and, and cultural uh, avenues and, and backgrounds. And our frontline people have to be able to interact very, very well and move back and forth. So I'm concerned about that. The second thing I'm concerned about, uh, I'll say specifically Oakdale, is um, kind of the corollary to that depth of experience that we have for our uh, department heads and our leaders in our uh, staff positions. There is going to be a changeover coming. So the next five years, I can envision, you know, two, three, maybe four people um, choosing to take retirement, and new people coming in. Um, so that's always that that uh, uneasy piece. Uh, first, congratulations to the people who have served so well, and, and then we hope that the replacement uh, people will be able to step into those big shoes and encourage them to do a a, a job that's as good or better than their, their predecessor. So the concern is just that change is coming. Awesome. Thank you. No idea what you're talking about, but now I'm going to move on to. <laughs> <laughs> just talk amongst yourselves. No. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm trying to pretend so I'm a young person. It's all you. Uh, threats. threats. Um, how do you follow? I don't know how you do that. Sorry about that. You know, uh, that's a tough one. There's a lot of 
things in everybody's life and our society on a daily basis that uh, that everybody's trying to get out in front of. And I know as a county, uh, and I know the city likely, we do our part to, to make sure residents can live freely and and control their own destiny. But uh, I think having that, you know, you try to have that vision of a good community and do the right things in government that it, it minimizes or eliminates threats. So I think we're in good shape. But the one that we see throughout the county and throughout the region across the United States is the opioids mm -hmm. epidemic. You know, we, much of us in the everyday life, you know, these are these painkillers that were being overlaid illegally uh, actually manufactured to be addicted. There's a number of them, I think it's eight or 12. They've even had aligned medical people to prescribe them in an illegal way to make tons of money and get people addicted. So people of all walks of life are uh, losing their jobs, losing their family, losing their health. We see the death rate going up of the opioid uh, addiction. Um, I think we all know people that have some surgery and they get on a painkiller and they, they comment on how effective it was, but maybe how hard it, you know, just naturally the ones that are legal to, to maybe not continue with them, but to have these illegal ones that were put there. So our sheriff department and our attorney, Pete Orpet, is doing a wonderful job to try to uh, eliminate that. Um, why it's a big, it's a big threat to everybody's health and welfare, but what we see is our social service costs going up. So now you've got some of the unemployed, we maybe become, we killed ourselves. Uh, you get families going on public, subsidies and needs, so it's really a, it's a bigger problem than, than we think. And everybody's hearing about it, but it truly is a, a problem, and it's one we're trying to get a handle on, uh, not only here in Washington County, but all over the country. Awesome. Commissioner, thank you. Uh, next, uh, in fact, we're going to uh, bounce, uh, in fact, stay with you, not bounce, as I'm looking at my cheat sheet here. Uh, of all the things you've mentioned and maybe some things you haven't mentioned, what's the most important thing to you, to you personally, uh, to accomplish? Uh, I'll sum it up, quality of life. Um, again, as I mentioned, I can't stress that people move to Washington County for the quality of life. Uh, people across the Twin Cities are actually very envious of what we have in our county as far as low taxes, a lot of good parks and libraries and roads, the wonderful St. Croix to the, to the east uh, and the Mississippi to the south and just the wonderful um, land and uh, public places and communities. So really hold, uh, making sure we maintain that quality of life. And uh, again, I think you need to be working on what we can do as public servants to, as Mayor Recky, we kind of tee it up for the private sector to, to prosper. Uh, uh, we want people to have a, a great community where their children can pro prosper. Uh, we want them to continue to love living in Washington County. So I really think we have to try to keep, keep getting better. You just can't maintain, you gotta try to keep moving, improving our parks, our libraries, uh, our roads, and uh, that's uh, the challenge and we wanna keep it affordable. So uh, uh, it's a good challenge to have. We don't have the problems. I think we just need to keep keep the quality of life we have here continuing. Thank you, Commissioner. Same question to you, Mayor Renke. Um, what's most important to you? Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I think um, 
there are a number of things, three, four things that uh, balance between number one importance, uh, highest parameter goal, uh, depending on what um, what day it is or what uh, piece of the uh, uh, the puzzle we're dealing with. At the end of the day, though, it almost always rises to the top in the issue of safety and public safety. So I'm going to say. From a, from a leader, municipal leader, civic leader, uh, our ability, leaders, our ability to um, keep uh, our residents safe and feeling like they have um, lots of comfort as they're working in the community, as they're traverse, uh, traversing back and forth, uh, is just job one. And uh, there, again, uh, Chief Sullivan, our police chief, has been in that role as an effective leader 30 plus years. And his, um, his department of um, roughly 33 people um, just continued to do a, a wonderful job day in and day out. So safety is number one. Personally is a funny question because I end up um, uh, failing to achieve the things that I think I should. And so that the, um, uh, the issue that I'm trying to talk about is that we each have our own expectations of how to perform and how to interact and, and how to uh, achieve. And um, this mayor role, uh, I'll be finishing two years after being appointed when uh, Commissioner Karwalski won the seat at the county level. I was appointed to complete uh, the Mayor Karwalski or Commissioner Karwalski's role. But that, um, that's been a tough job, you know. The tremendous shoes to fill from Stan. Uh, prior, uh, Mayor uh, Sirac, tremendous shoes, and, um, uh, and yet as I'm performing the job, uh, I regularly find myself just not quite achieving what I think I should do, but um, I think that's probably constant in all of us who are leaders and uh, managers trying to do uh, the best we can and trying to do the right things. So that, that just is. Great. Someday I'll figure that out. <laughs> Mayor, thank you. And this gets to our next question. In fact, you might have just teed it up perfectly. Uh, what attributes personally do you think you bring to your job, and it will be the same for the commissioner, that makes the council in Oakdale a better place? What, what, what's your piece to, uh, you know, if you look at the collective and want to, uh, not that the, the viewing audience can see this, but we do have three uh, city council members from the city of Oakdale here. We have uh, Council Member Polkebeck, Council Member Landis, and Council Member Zabel in attendance. So thank you all for coming. So obviously it's a tight-knit group from that perspective. Uh, and, but what, what, what's your piece? What's the piece that if, if I were to maybe even ask your peers, what, what, is, what, is, what is Mayor Ranke, what does Paul bring to that job? Mark, I would think that um, if you ask my peers, they might touch on um, something about the love for the community, love for the uh, city of Oakdale and just the, um, the strong, heartfelt desire to do good, to make it better, to help other people improve or deal with difficult times. So that may be one of them. The other thing, um, I think, is the um, uh, 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 personal enjoyment of people um, and, and being able to interact and be happy and, and um, because I'm very uh, cognizant that if I'm um, up, if I'm positive, if I'm um, you know, having a good day, uh, other people react and improve or change their outlook also. So, you know, personally, I, I, I'm, I'm aware of that. I try to do it. And we all, as leaders, again, uh, have that um, obligation. So that's two things that came to mind. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner, same thing. What, what do you bring to the county board that uh, maybe your peers would say, boy, this, this is... This is, this is Commissioner Kowalski. This is Stan's ticket. Right. Um, you know, I think a positive attitude. Um, you know, I think uh, the big picture, because it's really important not to get caught in all the details. You, you have wonderful staffs at the city level or county level, but if you have the big picture, the vision, and the optimism, and uh, I think uh, Mayor Reinke pointed on it. You're always trying to make what you can do as government to make your county better. And even if you come up short by having that stretch, that vision, you're making a lot better than not setting the expectations high. So uh, 
one a, a just positive attitude. I'm a real collaborative collaborative person. Uh, it's a team. You know, not one county commissioner or city council person is going to do it. But when you work together, you can get a lot done. And uh, it's good to understand people's differences and and bridge those gaps to. Compromise is not a bad thing. Um, but I really think it's always good to be thinking of the future. Um, set your expectations high, work hard for them, uh, be willing to adjust. And, uh, you know, it's just an honor to serve. So I, I like to think uh, not only with the county, it may sound corn, corny, but with the county board of my life, I get up each day and I try to just make a difference, you know, make people's lives around me better and, um, you know, just each day uh, try to do a better job. And um, so I'll leave it at that, looking awesome. at the big picture, being optimistic, going for the future. Awesome. You know, but I think also on that if, um, is we both bring uh, a large amount of uh, private experience, business experience, you know, you with your um, long history with Great Goal me with my history in real estate development and I think we're probably better off in our roles now because of that private experience yeah. and the reality of profit and loss and creating right. a product or providing a service right. and that um, serves us well I think as we lead or are involved in our organizations. Right uh, you know if I could touch on that Absolutely. I totally agree that's a good point Paul. Um, I know my company was a manufacturing company and you know I'm a little biased, but if you get a company that's making something, there's really a lot of related jobs that come with it because they still need insurance and they need food. They need right, the people go to the dentist and those jobs. Um, so as I'm on the workforce development board, you see those struggles on what it takes to, as Paul, grow a business. And, makes you more effective and in addition our life experiences I mean I always thought my biggest asset was you know raising four children uh, marriage just raising children experiencing life as everyday citizen uh, being normal uh, one of the compliments I get and I really like to be a normal everyday guy I show up at things and just enjoy myself in the community and if you stay grounded um, we're no special than anybody else. We just have the privilege to be elected and serve. And uh, it's good to, to just know what everyday people are going through and that is on those life experiences. Thank you, thanks for the compact. Leads me to one thing too, is that in both the cases of the county and the city, there are many ways to get engaged as professionals, as people that have had lifetimes of other topics. You don't have to be dedicated uh, to government to, to make that difference. And uh, both uh, the county website and the city website, there is opportunities. Uh, you mentioned the Workforce Investment Board. They're always looking for good members uh, to join that board. Uh, the City of Oakdale has the Park and Planning Commission, the Economic Development Commission. Uh, parks. So there's just so many opportunities. So I encourage all of our audience to take a look at that if you are interested uh, to make a difference uh, in either of those. And I also know the same is true on the school district side. So while not sitting here, there are plenty of opportunities at uh, School District 622 and our superintendent of schools, uh, Christina Sorio, is in our audience today. So thank you for being here as well. Uh, and so as, as that relates to uh, the third leg of government locally, uh, for sure there's opportunities. Um, I want to move into what I called the big time issue round. Um, we've kind of tried to get a little bit different uh, introductions and a little different uh, flavor uh, of what these two bring to their jobs and what their jobs entail. But I want to throw out a few topics just to get your thoughts on. There's no script to how you have to answer it. Uh, you can answer whatever comes to your mind. It can be what its impact is to the community, it can be your personal opinion, it can be anything you want it to be. And I've got about five or six topics. Uh, this one we are going to start with Commissioner Karwaski. Topic number one is something we've already taught, touched on, but bus rapid transit. And before we get into that, I have to see that's, a, that's not just a city and a county thing, that is also a statewide thing. 
uh, that there obviously requires some funding from our state. Uh, we do have one legislative uh, representative in our audience, uh, Representative Leon Lilly is in attendance here today, so thank you for being here as well. Um, bus rapid transit, talk about, you know, maybe the county, anything you want. Again, just what your thoughts are on bus rapid transit. Right. Um, actually, uh, that's a big thing, not only for the county, but it really for our future. Uh, I see people really starting to understand, even the naysayers of years ago being against transit, starting to say, I recognize we need it. I may not use it, but we need it for our future. And uh, it's, it, it's a totally a district too, so it goes through, that's the district I represent. So the Woodbury piece, I work with the Woodbury City Council and the Oakdale Council. Uh, the county's in charge of making sure it's put in well and affordable comes in under, but in budget. But we want to work with the cities to be a good partner to maximize your opportunity for the business growth, the jobs, and the housing, that housing could revitalize new housing uh, and, and business development growth. Um, it's self-sufficient. Right now, uh, I moved into the Gold Line Partners. It used to be the Gateway Corridor. I chair the uh, Gold Line Partners. We named it Partners because we truly are partners with not only of Ramsey County, and uh, this is the collaboration that's really wonderful. I must compliment Mayor Renke. Started right from the inception, so like five years. Mm -hmm and he kept the city council of Oakdale well apprised. So it's, it's, we're both, I think, uh, really embedded in, in developing that. Uh, so I chair the Goal Line Partners, and now, now it's uh, at the phase, we're about halfway through it. Uh, we did get the uh, federal transportation uh, approval to go into product development, and uh, the Met Council, who will build it, you know, we're working with them with the uh, with the CMC Commission that we both serve on. Um, so really, in the next year and a half, it'll go from two percent uh, product development. It'll be up to thirty percent, and it, it's a work in progress. Um, you know, it takes a long time to do, but it, it's ironic. I, as you go down that path of many years of development, it's um, um, really worth it to work out all the kinks and get the community <coughs> engagement. Uh, right now, as county commissioner, we're really trying to develop that relation across the state that uh, the whole state appreciates transit. You know, they have transit problems in Duluth and Mankato and even small towns. So I think they're starting to come on board. It's a, a statewide issue. But we need to connect. I know Leon, Representative Lilly here is a good advocate, but we really need statewide to work with our legislature to have that partner from the state. So in a year and a half, uh, we're going to have a federal financial partner and it's paid for just by a uh, quarter cent sales tax. So there's no increase to anybody's property tax. So there's no financial burden on a levy or anything to do with taxes. Um, it's just that quarter cent uh, uh, sales tax, which also is used some, for some other transportation projects. Um, I'll leave it at that. Commissioner, thank you. Same question. Or same topic. Yeah. No, the, the bus rapid transit is a, um, a key piece to uh, increasing the viability for the, the greater Metro East. The bus rapid transit um, system is, is roughly half the cost of a light rail transit system. Uh, facts are our density, population density on the Metro East is less than the West Metro. So the West Metro, even though I still question some of the statistics and, the, and how the dollars work for light rail on West Metro, the dollar is being spent to uh, explore, design, and keep on clarifying the 
route and cost of our bus rapid transit, um, again, are, are roughly half the cost of what the light rail costs. Um, so then when I first joined six years ago, the commission, I was a councilor, uh, a council member, and I joined the uh, Gateway Corridor Commission. Um, I was coming at it at a point where I thought it was a little bit crazy. Um, I thought a better option might be to add a lane of uh, um, a blacktop on 94, on 694, on the, on the route. Uh, what happened over six years is, or really over two years, the first two years, is that I began to understand more that, uh, you know, look, Renke, uh, vehicles and, and uh, highway miles, wonderful, and there's a place for that, and it will be um, continue to be increased and maintained. But the option or the idea of creating options for people to travel, to move around, to get to work, to get to recreation, um, really sold me. And so this bus rapid transit is created to provide another option for people, young, old, millennials, you know, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle, to allow them to uh, get to the places that they want to get to. The benefit of this also is that it is um, continuously running all day. Currently, we have a great system, which is the express bus system, or a great line. Well, that's in the morning and at night. But if somebody were to take that and he has to come back and, uh, and attend to a sick child or something back at home, they're out of luck because it's not running. This bus rapid transit system, called the Gold Line, will be running continuously um, from morning till late at night. Okay, now you can imagine that that might cause some problems with people's expectations about what's going to happen for the people who live on that line. And um, this gets a little bit to your comment earlier about opportunities to get involved. Uh, we've had great interactions and great meetings with neighbors and community members. Some are advocates and telling us to move faster. Some are saying, no way in heck is this thing going to get put in my neighborhood. Well, we got to figure that out because it is being planned and um, being involved in those type of meetings uh, do make a difference. It has shaped the alignment of that bus rapid transit guideway. It has changed the station design and it has changed the landscaping to minimize noise, to minimize um, uh, traffic and to um, help keep their, in uh, fact it was beautiful, one person said you know it's my piece of heaven when we came out here. We came out here and it was uh, 30 acres of nothing and we had this beautiful, or 30 acres of open space and we had this beautiful townhouse. And now you're going to put this bus rapid transit line in my backyard? Well, we are planning that and keep in mind that that site uh, that we're changing for the um, transit oriented development that site is privately owned and it is designed for development. So there could be 2,000 people working out of that business park in your open area that you look, look onto, or it can be housing like we're talking about, but change is happening. And part of our job and your job as a resident is to help make the change as good as possible and as beneficial to as many people as possible. So at the end of the day, you know, I, I started off thinking that mm, bus rapid transit wasn't uh, such a cool idea. I, um, I'm a convert and I'm an advocate and we are making this line um, to be very, very good. So I'm optimistic and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, starting construction, you know, getting to that pay, uh, place and that might be in um, 2021, thereabouts, we might be able to start construction yep. and then be open in 24. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the operational? I mean, the, the estimates, I know these are all estimates as this is still planning, but what would be if, if I'm a resident or a business owner, when would they start seeing a bus that could carry a, a resident or a employee down that line? I think yeah. 2024. And yes. We really want to stay on track for yes. that. Okay. And if I could just follow up uh, sure. on um, some comments by Mayor Ranke. Um, you know, what people don't do, what they have to understand, um, with growth and, and those businesses, those old style businesses uh, with big box and a lot of cars, that development would happen anyhow. So those roads where the BRT, the bus rapid transit is going, that guideway, that extra lane, 
those roads were geared for expansion for the most part to add that extra lane anyhow. So, but with the bus rapid transit, now you've got like 3M anticipates 10 to 15% of the employees switching from car to bus. Well, that takes cars off road, takes pressure off a of 94, takes pressure off a of 494, 694, 94 intersection. So it's a balance of multi-prong, multi-modal. You know, we're even seeing more where we have 87 miles, uh, I believe, of separated trail in the county for bike and walking. So we're seeing people wanting to migrate to walk and bike, and now the rapid bus, and still car. Well, this is nothing to threaten the car. We're going to improve our roads and keep that going. But we really feel that we'll take some of the pressure off these roads where this bus rapid transit, one bus every 12 minutes versus it, you could see an initial 20, 30 cars during that time that that buses eliminated cars. Awesome. Fisher, thank you. Yeah. One more thing. And one of the beauties of this uh, plan that we are creating, this bus rapid transit plan, is uh, taking advantage of federal dollars, state dollars, and uh, county dollars, and railroad authority dollars. I mean, there's, there's lots of partners. But um, a benefit to the vehicle uh, population is going to be example. Current plan is a new bridge over 94, connecting Helmo to Bielenberg in Woodbury. So it's the southern uh, leg of the uh, Helmo extension. That is currently planned with two lanes of vehicle traffic, two lanes for the bus rapid transit, um, a pedestrian section, and a bicycle, bicycle section. So there's going to be the first benefit to the bus rapid transit. That's job one. But then the also um, additional elements of the vehicle lanes, a new bridge for vehicle traffic uh, over 94. It's huge. It's terrific. Shifting some of the radio drive traffic, which is overcrowded, to, to the new Elmo Bielenberg. Yep. And um, yeah, it's just uh, there's some awesome. extra benefits. Yes. Thank you. We got about, I'm going to try to wrap up. I got two more topics the next uh, 10 minutes. I'm going to try to open the floor to some questions. Uh, the next topic, start with Mayor Renke, would be school safety curbing violence in schools. School safety is a um, significant topic right now, even, even more so than uh, a couple of months ago. And the sadness, the tragedy of school shootings, um, I think, pains all of us. Um, I'm not sure how to attend to it. Um, we've had some conversations from uh, uh, Superintendent uh, Sorio calling together the, the uh, mayors in the region to meet with her and her cabinet um, folks to talk about issues. This is one of the issues that gets talked about. And uh, the steps include you know, better um, access control to the uh, entry points of the schools. It also it has to include, uh, you know, how parents interact with their kids, and some of the home uh, functions of um, citizenship, of rights and wrongs, of being a good steward, of taking advantage of the opportunities, and and discouraging uh, the violence and those type of behaviors. Um, I'm not answering it very clearly. Your question about do this, 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 this except to say it is not anybody's sole responsibility. It is my responsibility. It is, uh, you know, Councilmember Landis' responsibility. It is uh, business person Eric uh, Morley's responsibility to help generate the solutions to what is happening in our communities and working with our, um, our school district leaders and principals um, and teachers in the schools. Awesome. Mayor, same question. Again, anyhow, any way you want to answer, just your thoughts on school safety and curbing violence yeah. in schools. You know, we're, we're fortunate in Minnesota to not have as many strategies or, you know, really uh, they're happening much more elsewhere. I mean, uh, but it's a potential tragedy that could happen here. And I think Mayor Reinke hit on a lot of the key points, so I don't want to be redundant, but I'll add that um, at a county level, uh, at least five school districts in throughout the county and I know the city provides a community service officer 
in a lot of the schools, and I think our uh, sheriff's department does that in the areas where they don't have their own police department. So we do that also. That's a big help. And, uh, you know, I think if we could develop, I think really too uh, that had been mentioned is we have to really look closer at the psychological strength of these kids to be able to identify them and get help early. Uh, that's one of the things I'm learning as a uh, county commissioner with our social service problems. There's a lot of mental health that's now becoming a bigger burden, late, especially later in life. And if we can like invest some dollars on uh, reaching these people with some self-help and guidance, I think their mental problems may not grow. Uh, but I think also really from the child, I think it's a local control issue <coughs> with the lake, local school boards. So I think anything the county can do just to be supportive of that local control, the local school district. And, uh, but that psychological area of the in kind of related is providing a more, uh, a future for these kids where they may be engaged in their school. I know uh, we're on the Workforce Development Board, one of the things that grow our workforce is to make kids come out of school and get a purposeful job is career pathways. And uh, we're really working with Christina Sawyer, 622. I give them a great applause on them recognizing this, the way they have to educate. We certainly encourage everybody to go to a four-year school, but we really need a stronger workforce where kids come out of high school more per with a better purpose. Because I think that's, if you look at these shootings, it's a kid kind of lost in society. And I think if we can reach more kids and provide, you know, purpose. So we're working with the Workforce Development Board to support our businesses to get a stronger workforce, get kids engaged, of having a vision for their future at the middle school level at a young age. So those are some things that are my thoughts. Yeah. And Mark, uh, what uh, Commissioner uh, Kowalski was talking about, uh, pretty much leads to the interconnectedness of all these different elements. So uh, while you were speaking, I was thinking about um, how um, our kids need to uh, have options and need to have that uh, sense of um, belonging and how, um, again, we, it is not anybody's sole responsibility to do uh, it. It is our responsibility to, uh, to work together and try to improve. Awesome. Thank you both for the answer. Uh, Time-wise, we got to wind it down. I'd love to add another 10 topics to the thing, but I'd like to give you each some chance for final thoughts. We uh, started uh, with the mayor at the front end. I'm going to start with the county commissioner on the back end. Just, uh, just a minute or two on final thoughts on things we might not have hit on today and something uh, maybe uh, the audience uh, both live and uh, on TV might want to know. No, it's, uh, it's been a good session. We had a lot of wide-ranging topics. Um, you know, I've been a county commissioner on my second year. I'm up, I'm, I'm up for re-election. I will be running in November, and there will be a primary in August. And uh, I'll, uh, I think I've uh, worked hard, worked smart, uh, represent eight cities. I'll continue to work hard for them, Oakdale, it's the largest city. I live in Oakdale. It's 55% of District 2. I uh, represent a good portion of Matamidi. I represent the northwest quadrant of Woodbury. Uh, there's a small section of White Bear Lake, uh, Birchwood Village, Willerney, Pine Springs. Those are small towns. I really uh, value every taxpayer uh, I represent equally. Uh, doesn't matter where they live, and uh, try to work hard, uh, work smart each day, uh, provide uh, the best use of those hard-earned uh, tax dollars that the citizens provide, um, and keep working hard to not only maintain our quality, but let's improve it every step of the way, improve our quality of life, and work really efficiently collaborating with our cities. Like, Oakdale is wonderful. You know, a lot of the uh, councils out here 
right now. Uh, Mayor Ranke has been great to work with. We work with this other city staffs. So really that county working with the cities to be a partner uh, so that we all can get better uh, and do it in a really uh, low cost way, delivering high quality services for the residents. That's, that's what I'll be working on. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mayor, and then when we're done here, if the audience has any questions, it's impossible to take our TV audience questions, but if there's any questions from the house, we'll repeat it for the camera and, and let these two answer uh, right after. Quick one, I also yes. represent landfall, so they're all equal, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Yeah. The, um, I think I want to say thank you, uh, and, and really the people I get to serve with, the elected officials, um, Councilmember Paul Quebec, Councilmember Landis, Councilmember Zabel, Councilmember Rasmussen, a uh, great group of people that um, we get to lead, we get to talk, we get to argue, we get to debate a little bit, and, and generally the attitudes that we bring to the table get flushed out and get um, honed to become good policy. So that's cool. I also get to work with um, uh, City Administrator Fisher. I get to work with um, the department heads, be it the finance and police and fire and, and you know, I think there's eight, I, I misstated, I think I said last time there were 13 departments, there's really eight departments, but um, phenomenal people and they make us look good and they make the city of Oakdale look good and then they make the city or the broader metro region look good. Um, if I had thought about uh, what I was going to be doing uh, 15, 16 years ago when I first got involved with uh, Oak, uh, the, the chamber, it wasn't chamber then, what was it called? The Oakdale Business Professional Association. Yeah, if I had thought 15 years ago that someday I'd be sitting up here having a chance to talk with uh, Commissioner Karwowski and, and being interviewed or, or moderated by yourself, I would have said you're nuts. So what that means though I is am, that anybody in the audience, anybody who's watching, you know, is this um, uh, request and an urge for getting involved, get involved somewhere and try to make it better and as things move, you'll be surprised where you end up. You know, I'm, I'm totally surprised and um, to be sitting here. I'm having a good time and it's really impactful, but really, you know, who would have thunk that I could be doing this? Maybe lastly, uh, I want to say thanks, uh, you know, family commitments. Uh, anybody that serves at our levels and especially at your level or uh, Representative Lilly uh, at the state level, significant commitment and sacrifice uh, with their families. And so thank you to our, our families. I think you'd, you'd share that with me, uh, Stan. And it's, uh, it's been very enjoyable. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And uh, before I do close, again, um, I think we touched on a ton of topics. I, I, there may not be uh, a question coming from the group that's here this morning. Uh, but if there is any questions, I will field them. We'll repeat it for the camera audience. If not, I'm going to move into closing comments myself uh, and get us on the road. I don't see any. I mean, this was this was a fun format. Again, a change for us. Normally, we have five or six people up here, and it's really hard to dive deep into the topics. And today, we've been able to, I think, very successfully do that uh, because of the fact that, that we, we had just the two of you. And I, I love the interaction. Uh, I do want to thank, again, Oak Marsh for being our uh, constant host for this event. I want to thank all of our elected officials who showed up. I want to thank everybody in the audience. Uh, who showed up, uh, but most specifically thank the two of you for not only your service, uh, but for agreeing to be on camera and, and take part in, uh, in my antics uh, for an hour and a half this morning. So, uh, I, uh, again, uh, I'm with the Oakdale uh, Chamber of Commerce, formerly the Oakdale Business and Professional Association. If anybody wants any interest on that, uh, website is www.oakdalechamber.org. You can feel free to go there. There's also links uh, I, I know for sure on the city of, of Oakdale website, and that's www.ci.oakdale.mn.us. For the county, it's very similar. It's uh, co.washington.mn.us, I okay. believe. No. Anyhow, no, no, we, nobody's going to remember just, that. You can just search City of Oakdale, Minnesota, yes. County you of Washington. You can Google Minnesota. it. <laughs> Thank you very much yes. for that detailed I'm gonna, just web address. Just to do that right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I just always, I walk out of here every year and I'm in my car 10 minutes later going, I never mentioned those entities. So I want to make sure everybody knows to get involved as, as, as you both have stated. 
uh, go to those websites and and thank and and do that. So again, thanks everybody for coming. Again, my name was Mark Cove. I appreciate being able to sit with both of you, and uh, thank you. thanks to everyone, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.